Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is Wednesday. So happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Hump Day. It is 7 22, uh, 2020, and it is 9 24 a.m. Eastern. There was a lot of information that I needed to collect pre market. Uh, in order to have an informed decision for the open. Can I please have a sound check? Just wanna make sure that you guys can hear me. And also if you could see the six uh, charts that we have right here in front of us, and we're gonna get started. First stop, economic releases after two days in which we didn't have any, uh, any economic release. Uh, it was all about earnings and the volatility and velocity from uh, the earnings results. Uh, pre-market and after the market has closed. Now we're finally starting to ramp up a little bit in economic releases. At 10 o'clock, we do have the existing home sales and we did have the HBA numbers come out at nine o'clock about an hour ago. So keep those numbers in mind, the existing home sales, uh, because it's, they're coming at 10 o'clock, major reversal time into the market. At 10.30, we have crude oil inventory. So you guys know the drill, most likely that we're not gonna have a trade, a day trade or potential swing unless uh, the volatility subsides after the 1030 oil inventory announcements. And this is all for the economic releases for today. Today, we did have a plethora of earnings and we still have plenty of earnings that will come in after the market closes. We also had a big um, uh, news event in regards to Pfizer. Uh, and uh, Pfizer screaming higher pre-market and uh, it's creating uh, more bullishness for the Dow. So Dow is gonna be again front and center for us for the trading session, it's gonna be in play. Once the tech companies will uh, start reporting, we will uh, navigate again towards uh, NASDAQ and the rest of the indices. We're seeing some uh, moderate uh, bullish price action continuing into Russell. That was our candidate for yesterday. And we're seeing also some really nice price action activity in the Dow. To start off the open, uh, we have a nice uh, balance into NASDAQ and uh, the M&E S&P, they're uh, literally almost flat, six points down in uh, NASDAQ, almost six points down in the M&E S&P, and also uh, Dow, I would say relatively flat, taking into consideration that when we're day trading, we're seeing one minute bars that are about 100 points. So uh, having uh, the Dow down 71 points is literally consideration, considering it flat. Russell is down a little bit more than that, but it has a very bullish structure. You can see that uh, right from the five minute chart, the Russell is starting to rotate. And uh, it, since it's down about uh, eight plus points this morning, 0.59% uh, is the more declined index. However, it's still uh, holding on very strong. Uh, we're going to talk in depth about the market structure into these indices, but just want to highlight the fact that oil is still trading into a bullish zone. Uh, this was the area from which it broke out in the overnight last night into the London session and had huge velocity and created a target beyond 4250. And I would just pull back. So we have two zones that we're going to be focusing on today, obviously, after 1030. Uh, the first area that needs to be uh, held is the uh, $41 area, uh, which is the retest from the breakout zone. And again, the secondary level of uh, focus is going to be uh, the 41.50 and the 41.75. 41.75 would actually erase all of these uh, all of these the highs right here. I would be more interested in a possibility for the upside if we manage to trade over these highs. Uh, as far as gold is concerned, uh, we had a trade that we initiated at uh, 1817 and we trailed it out uh, at uh, 1850. If you guys are still in, I highly recommend at least lock in uh, 45. If you don't want to take it out at 50, lock in 45. It's below these pivot lows on the four hour. I didn't want to wait. Uh, it was uh, it was getting a little bit too volatile in here, and I really don't want to give back. We had uh, such a beautiful uh, such a beautiful trade in gold. We initiated the trade last Monday. We were in the trade for about a week and three days. It was a swing trade, and uh, it hit our, all our targets. So for me, it's mission accomplished. Uh, we're up thirty three points. Uh, that is uh, three hundred thirty dollars if you're trading a micro. 
uh, about 15, more than 15 to $1,700 if you're trading uh, the mini and your $3,300 off per contract if you are trading the full size contract. So that's a nice gain overall uh, with any account size. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, other events for today, uh, let's keep uh, in mind that there are certain developments with uh, the Chinese embassy in Houston, and uh, we should uh, also pay attention to the narrative around that space because it may influence our trading as well. These, these uh, uh, narratives are not really fantastic, especially when they're coming right into earnings season and they may be very conflicting. So. Uh, let's uh, keep in mind that uh, we need to be aware of everything that is happening. All right, so right now we're going to move the screen and we're going to get into our technical analysis for the day. All right, so let me just uh, zoom it out a bit here. Just give me a quick heads up, uh, type a one or two if you guys can see the one chart that I have displayed right now. The market just opened. Remember, we're just going to have to wait a little bit until it calibrates. All right, so uh, the Dow, let's start with the Dow. First of all, a directional bias for the trading session. We're neutral right now. We have the overnight tap very close to the 10 exponential moving average onto the daily chart, and that is in the location of 26,500. You could see it right here. Uh, so we came very close to tapping it onto that zone. We also have a high, a lower high. And if we should start trading below 620, then we should have a lower high right here that may want to retest the, six, uh, the 625. However, we're still trading in a four hour. And that's one of the reasons why I was a little late this morning with the read, because you can see here we have a four hour rotation up. So this is extremely bullish. So if we trade over this high, over 703 to 705, we may get the price continuation higher into 750, 800 and even higher. So I would be more for the bullish side than I would be for the bearish side today, just because we're having this segment that uh, reflects a lot of bullish, bullish activity. Uh, let's move on to the m and &E S&P because they're all setting them on the, on the four hour uh, trigger. And uh, if we get a print of 3250, this is definitely gonna start moving higher. So 3250 is gonna do the trick. Uh, the problem is going to be with establishing the risk for this particular move at a first uh, look. I would try to establish a one hour and uh, one hour support, and that would be into the 32, 39 to 32, 40 level. But I would like to wait for more confirmation on smaller time frames. So not only a trigger here, because if we're taking a trigger on the four hour, we definitely need to respect the uh, uh, respect the parameters from the four hour. So that's why we need to wait for our day trade to be setting up. But definitely, nonetheless, very bullish into this um, into this setup. Also, four-hour rotation happening in NASDAQ. The trigger is going to be over 85, 885. Here it is. They're, they're trying to do the massive move right now. Uh, NASDAQ is a laggard. It has continu continues to be the laggard. Uh, it was a laggard in yesterday's trading session with heavy divergency to the downside, while the other indices were green. NASDAQ was printing red and we're calibrating. So this is somewhat of a sloppy range with the four-hour rotation, like I said, over uh, 885, that is going to be the trigger. Again, the issue is going to be establishing the risk for the day trade today, and that's gonna be the challenge. Russell is trading into the same segment of the four hour rotation, uh, and uh, we're looking for uh, 1482. These are gonna be the triggers. Again, we're gonna have to look for more evidence on smaller time frames in regards to a technical stop. So far, the support levels is all the way into the 65. So we're going to have to wait for the price to subside a little bit. Oil becoming very interesting into this location. Four-hour rotation as well. You can see it right here. Hence my uh, affinity and uh, hence my, uh, uh, my bias, my bullish bias uh, over 50 and over 75. So this is going to be the cluster. So over 50 and over 75, 75 is going to bring more confirmation to the table because it's definitely gonna erase these uh, two chop zones right here that were developed in about 12 hours of trading. 
Uh, so definitely developing some resistance there. So let's keep this in mind. Again, if it should develop right into uh, 1030, I'm not going to be interested in initiating any kind of trade since we have the oil inventory numbers at 1030. And uh, I never gamble with price and with price action around these uh, economic releases. As far as gold is concerned, like I said, if you guys have not trailed out of the trade and uh, you could type it right here, if you're still in the trade, you may consider to have a trail stop into the 45 or into the 40s. But like I said, there are no guarantees that we're not going to get a steeper pullback. We had a huge price advance within the last uh, three trading days. Uh, we have achieved all the targets. And for me personally, I don't think that I want to be in this trade anymore. Uh, on the other hand, this is a very strong consolidation area. I'm looking at uh, the possibility of a shorter term uh, swing uh, over 57 to 58, but again, it's not formed yet. So please do not buy anything into this area. It is not developed. We don't have evidence that the price may be ready to continue higher. So far it is sideways and we have achieved the targets, but if there should be any uh, possibility for a continuation higher, and a formation, um, set up formation for us to initiate, uh, I will be the first one to communicate that for you, to you. Uh, last but not least, EB, uh, and these are the bonds, the bonds are on the move again. We do have a trade in uh, uh, TLT uh, for the long side. I'm gonna uh, show that in just a few moments here. Uh, literally really nice grind up. You can see the shallow pullback and the price is regaining on the daily chart, the 10 exponential moving average. And TLT, this is the most cost efficient risk uh, for me. We're heading into the 68, we're actually trading 68.25 when we actually um, uh, had a print of 30. Uh, so we're looking definitely for a continuation higher. The daily chart suggests uh, that suggests that what see the break right here it just happened right now, uh, and the fact that we were residing into this area, we're just uh, dissolving and trying to digest these prior highs. And this prior highs from back from May, and also we do have a cluster of resistance into the same location with the common denominator this 168.50. Uh, throughout the month of uh, April. And if you can see it right here, uh, even in, uh, the, the, when we had the spike to the upside in May. All right, uh, I'm gonna move the screen back to the five minute, uh, five minute watch list. And uh, we're gonna start actively watching for some trades for the trading session today. Okay, just give me a quick heads up. Let me know if you guys can see it. Okay, you can see that YM, uh, definitely YM, SMP, and Russell have uh, the better structure for a continuation higher. Like I said, uh, they, th these are valid triggers that I mentioned on the four hour, but definitely if you want to take it here at 700, contingent uh, would be to uh, have the stop at 500. So you're going to apply 200, uh, 200 point stop right here. And the targets are going to be reflected and they are reflected on the charts. We're looking for a continuation in the Dow into the 26,800, 26,860, and uh, 900 and 926. We also have continuation higher into the MNE SMP. The MNE SMP, uh, let me just put it on the daily chart. Oops, sorry, on the hourly chart here again. So the MNE SMP has targets into uh, the 2660, 2670 right here. So this would be the tradable void into the 70s. Uh, and also we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, target bullish targets for NASDAQ once it gets above this 880 zone, but it's really important for NASDAQ to get over 880 and then we can start grinding a little bit higher. It's not going to be as easy price advance uh, as it is for uh, the Dow and for the M&E S&P. The reason the Dow is just exploding right now is because uh, we're having Pfizer that is gapping up right now and is just moving higher. Caterpillar that is actually very strong again today. Uh, Home Depot, we're starting very strong today. So we have very, very strong components within, uh, within, um, uh, within the Dow. So we're gonna stick with the Dow. Financials continue to be strong. Uh, they are into a, a breakout pattern. Uh, most of the financials that I'm looking at and I'm monitoring, uh, like JP Morgan City, uh, even XLF is into the same pattern. Morgan Stanley, very bullish, uh, trading into the highs of the last one, two, three days, uh, even four days. Bank of America is still very strong. So again, we can't expect continuation higher into these names.
Okay, so we're gonna start actively watching for some trades right now. Still very early, uh, 9.38 so far. So we still have a little bit into the 9.45, 9.45 for flex. The first reverse to time in the market. So uh, we're gonna have to wait and see uh, where the market is trading. And uh, if we're gonna get a pullback into about five, five minutes, around five minutes. So definitely today I would favor the Dow, uh, at Russell and the S&P and not necessarily NASDAQ. That, that's going, literally this is what's going to be in play more. It's interesting that right off the open, the price uh, navigated higher and never looked back. So we had a first impulse and that is uh, due to the fact that we did have some very strong Dow components that are literally blasting higher and also strong financials, you know, are reflected in S&P and Russell. In the meantime, the NASDAQ stocks, um, Uh, NASDAQ stocks uh, are still holding, uh, some of them are still holding yesterday's parameters like Apple holding uh, near yesterday's lows, Microsoft as well, uh, NVIDIA inside, um, Amazon on the verge of a sell, however, still maintaining the support from yesterday's trading session. Netflix holding very strong for the last three days right into the 20 SMA. Netflix is going to be a top watch uh, because it had reported earnings and right now it's uh, steering into the clear. Um, and uh, uh, I like the price activity in bonds. I really do. We have, we're invested in TLT and uh, nice going with TLT. So we have another winner on our hands. Uh, today, the name of the game is, again, going to be patience to wait for that perfect setup. So patience equals money uh, and setup equals trade. So we need to wait for a setup in order to make money. Okay. Uh, Caterpillar is reporting July 31st and Caterpillar looks very strong here. So we still have some time for Cal Caterpillar, about a week and a half until it reports earnings. They're continuing higher, no desire to chase.
Okay, a uh, new swing trading caterpillar. Dow stocks continue to be very strong. Myrna, interesting. Myrna, interesting here as well. Oh, they're just continuation higher, no pullback in any of these indices so far. McDonald's. Super strong today. We do have a trade in McDonald's, so I'm monitoring those trades as well. McDonald's achieved all the targets, so right now trail 195. All right, so far nothing into the indices. Boeing on the move. This gives a lot of strength to Dow. All right, uh, we're just into that first reversal time, 9.45. Let's see if we're getting a pullback here to retest the prior entry zone.
All right, uh, we still have about one minute into this candle. Let's see if we're gonna get a doji here. That is gonna probably, let's see if we're gonna get a pullback from this doji. Uh, I'm looking at the Dow actually. Any pullback in Dow in my book is gonna be viable. I'm just scanning through these Dow stocks and they continue to be very strong. Here we have it, it's 9.50. Uh, actually, I'm looking to see if it trades below 60, 760, then it's gonna enter a pullback. The next pullback area that I would like to see it is into, I would say into the 7.20 zone. That would be, um, that, would mean, that would be my spot. For, uh, for a long here. Not interested uh, to the long side here as well. NASDAQ is firming up. So NASDAQ may be a late bloomer and may be our last chance for, uh, for higher here. If you're in McDonald's, trail the last targeted, which is 195, it's on a tear. That 880s, uh, yeah, 880. And the stop is gonna be wide, so you may want a position size for that is into the 820. Dow yeah, stocks can continue to be super strong, but let's see the first rejection here. Now we're getting close to 10 o'clock reversal time, plus we have news at 10 o'clock. So let's not rush into anything at right into 10 o'clock. Yesterday we were done at this time, almost done at this time. Yeah, I'm going to wait for the numbers that are going to come out in seven to eight minutes. This may literally push the market higher or may enter it into a retrace. B, Y, and D is going to be on our radar again. For the swing. All right, they're running into that spot.
I would rather miss a trade than have a stop, like in all honesty, you know. So right now, uh, we're setting up into NASDAQ. It's still very choppy NASDAQ. NASDAQ came here right into a co conflicting zone. And that's why I want to see it pop and then a pullback because it's it's so conflicting on the one hour. It's right into the 50 SMA. You can see it right here. Okay. Man, it came right into this spot. See, the problem is giving the risk because they're running off this, these four hour rotations and these are swing, uh, these are swing um, stops. Okay, they're definitely not day trading stops. So that's why I'm, I just have to be extra cautious and wait for um, the right setup. NVIDIA, bull sandwich, very strong. be tough. Anyone in any trades today? Okay, we're four minutes away from 10 o'clock. Reversal. Okay, we have our chief target in uh, in YM without being in the trade. Uh, Ralph, Best Buy, is it a swing? Oh, okay. Is it setting up? Oh, it's a day trade. Oh, let me take a look at it. Oh, it's gone already. Oh, you are in it. Oh, you're taking profit already. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I thought it's something that is setting up right now that we could take it up, that we could take a look at it. Okay, back to indices. Guys, I really appreciate it. Like if you were looking at something, look at something that we can trade and just post it in here. I don't know, Ralph, did you post it earlier? Maybe I missed it. Gotcha. Did it report earnings? I don't think so, but I saw it in the news today. Upgrade, gotcha. Okay, here's nine, it's 957 and we're seeing the rejection right here into, uh, into NASDAQ. Russell already reacting. Definitely the best candidate for today. I'm still looking at the Dow. Dow is the best because it's into the news. See how it achieved. See, I would have loved to take this setup, but I'm telling you, like, I didn't want to give it that much of a risk. I was conflicted by the risk here because the entry was 700, the stop uh, 523. If this is in your plan, then I called this trade in the free market game plan as it is here. Uh, with, and this is now it's into the first target. It has achieved the first target. But for a day trade, this is too much of a risk. So I didn't want to take this risk. But there are traders that are fine with that kind of risk and I'm fine with it. So for us, for day traders that are looking for tighter stops, 
There's nothing setting up just yet. AMD is on the move again. So here's the thing, guys. I'm monitoring these NASDAQ stocks as they're continuing to push a little bit higher. Hey, John, at the uh, diamonds for a swing. Uh, the diamonds are going to get their high velocity at 270.55 to 57. 55 to 57 into the diamonds. So it needs to get uh, into yesterday's highs, a bit over yesterday's highs. That's where it's gonna get its full velocity. 10 o'clock, top of the hour. Uh, we're having very nice price action. In fact, you can see we have the 10 a.m. lows and 10 a.m. highs and the price is trading into the upper 10 a.m. highs. These are the uh, 10 a.m. lows right here into the Dow. See where the price is. 10 a.m. S&P, 10 a.m. NASDAQ, and 10 a.m. Russell here. So they're trading into the highs. Look at the structural change in NASDAQ. NASDAQ wanting to pinch higher into the 10 o'clock as the Dow is pulling back. Wow, right on the dot, 10 o'clock reversal time. <laughs> All right, let's see if we're getting our 720 or so pullback. And NASDAQ was a late bloomer today. And by the way, we do have a rotation in, uh, this is a wild card. I'm not going to call it officially in the room, but uh, the pullback area is textbook into the $41. If you want to take it long, $41.55. It just right now into the trigger. This is your risk. Like I said, $41. This is the trigger, $41.55. And uh, look for first target into $41.75 and $42. And uh, the next high is 42.20, actually 42.18, and then it's gonna run 42.50 or so. To me, it's on the riskier side because um, it's before uh, it's oil numbers. So, you know, oil numbers may be out and swoosh <laughs> to the downside before it continues higher or the other way around. AMD is on a tear today. Uh, we're still in AMD in our swing program.
the five minutes suggests that we may have a bit steeper pullback. I'm looking at the 730 level for the pullback, but we'll see on a strong market. In fact, this is the first level of support into the 750. I would like a bit steeper pullback, like I said, into 730 and 725. Yes, NVIDIA is very strong, John, super strong. We may have some five minute rotations. Yes, Craig, sure. Sure, guys, if you have any trading ideas, please post them in the room. We can take a look. We are all going to benefit from them. Okay, here's the conflicting part about, uh, about the Dow here. I love the five-minute pin. Okay, so it could be a long, possibly over 790. Uh, However, take a look at this 15 minute is divergence. So we have it here as a doji rotation and then coming back down. See, this is it. I love this space for support, but it's super shallow here. So I'm getting a sell from the 15 and a buy from the five. I don't know which one is gonna, which one is gonna win. So this trade is gonna have a lower odds type of, um, yeah, it's gonna be a lower odds trade, but I definitely still like it. Um, NASDAQ is chugging along and it's getting a big push from NVIDIA. NVIDIA can be along here. NVIDIA is along here, exactly where it's trading right now for a swing. Uh, you could apply two stops to it. One stop is at 408 or 409 and the second stop is 392. I'm still waiting on, still waiting on YM. Going back and forth, YM or NASDAQ? YM or, YM or NASDAQ here? NASDAQ is a bit conflicting. Just going back and forth, back and forth. There's a lot of resistance here in NASDAQ from the one hour, see? Look at these, look at these chop zones right here. It has not dissolved these chops. The high velocity is going to come over 920. Okay, here's the spot, 920. This would be a buy zone contingent on you having a stop. This is the first support zone, 774. So if you want to take it here, this is your stop. Okay, and then you're going to be looking for the purple lines for targets. And all the way here, 11,000 and on this. So we're going to look for purple lines for targets, green line, blue line right here. I think we're getting a pullback now. All right, Apple is going back up. Google uh, still uh, trading into yesterday's lows. NVIDIA, like I said, it's rotating. This is the buy spot right here for the swing if you want to uh, take some NVIDIA. Uh, Microsoft inside bar towards bullish. Um, Netflix, like I said, Netflix, that Netflix actually, this could be a wild card. Netflix, Netflix can be a wild card as well. Kind of like it. Netflix can be a scale in type of thing. Scale in type of trade. And the reason for that is because of the location where it is trading, it's trading on support within the last four days.
and has a tight stop 483 now all right we're getting a pin what time is it uh five minutes to 11 uh, to 10 15. i wish it was 11. <laughs> seems like a long day when you don't take a trade all right uh 15 minute is trying to consolidate more five minute here it's right into the trigger darn <sighs> miss 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 missed miss the five minute rotation here <sighs> sometimes they happen so fast see i was looking at netflix uh, the trigger like 780 let, let, let's let's just wait for it let's just wait for it let me just start typing some parameters here i would like it at 780 i'm not in yet i'm getting still that 15 minute to me is still, still conflicting to me it still looks like it wants to test at 730725 Yeah, let, let's wait. I am not getting in anything right now. Let's wait. And we're getting very close to the 1030 prime time trigger time. That stack is not really setting up for anything here. It's just a bunch of chop. It, the only thing that I like in NASDAQ is the four hour. That's it. NASDAQ four hour. And in fact, NASDAQ four hour 80. If NASDAQ is going to get again over 87, I would consider it. Well, not 87. Now it needs more. What is, what is the price that it needs? See, this is a buy zone, but on the four hour contingent, you place a stop at seven, uh, 770. And your target is going to be 900, 9, 916, 920, 930, 934, and then void to 11,000. Michael, yes. Yes, we're still uh, we're still in AMD uh, on the swing. Very strong. We've been in it, and I've been in it in, uh, since June, June fifteen. Something like that. If it trades, and here's the thing with AMD. Uh, let me share my other screen. Let me put it up. I, I like it for the core side. Like it for the core side because it has mega targets above. Uh, Okay, give me a heads up if you guys can see the screen with AMD. Okay, um, so these are the targets that I'm looking at here. Okay, so I'm looking for 61 to 62 and then it has void to 65. This is nothing else but a sideways range that and an explosive move, pending explosive move to the upside. And right now it just got started over 59. So 59 was the breakout point here. So it's gonna go run straight to 61. Well, let me let me get this exact read. Okay, the, the indices are in a pullback phase, so we can definitely talk about AMD. Let me put it on the weekly because it's much more evident here. Okay.
Okay, here are the exact targets. So it's gonna run, uh, what's the price here? 61.34, let me just get it to a daily time frame so I can see the price. Oh, I can't see it here. Okay, here's the price, 61.33. This is it, this is the first target, 61.33. And then the next run is going to be to 64. So this is the bigger, the bigger image that I'm seeing right here in AMD. Okay, let's get back to indices. But AMD definitely super strong. We, we've had like such a fantastic run of, with, our, uh, with our swings this year. Nice consolidation in the indices. Just give me a heads up, guys, if you can see it. All right, so we're trying to set up again here. So careful with NASDAQ. We may have another support into 860 right now in NASDAQ. See, 880 would be aggressive. Uh, no, Tal, we're not in any trades right now. We're just trying to see if we can find someone, something to get in. And you could see that oil triggered and there is some, uh, there are some individuals here that, you know, traded for the short term portion of it. Okay. Well, here's the confirmation, 891, 891, NASDAQ long, 891. Uh, with a protective stop into 860 below 860, we're gonna have targets into 895. That's what it is. And we need to get above that. The next one is going to be 900. 918. Nine twenty. Nine twenty five and nine thirty four. Here it is. And we're gonna have a YM trade as well. Wait for the entry, don't jump, don't jump in. If you're on a trial basis for the trading room on a one day pass, wait for the parameters to fill. Wait for the price to get into that spot. Do not jump into trades. There's a reason why we have the entry where we have it. You jump into trades, you're almost gonna have a guaranteed stop. I like this 15 minute context here.
All right, here's the doubtrite as well. There's a little five minute rotation in the Dow. If you want to scale in, uh, the Dow can be 770, 770 Dow, 770 Dow entry. Scale in one lot, 770. The second lot is 791 at. So scale in half at 770 with a stop 740. Same targets. Then scale in the second Scale in at 791, the rest. Okay. Um, in mini SMP, not bad either. No, in mini SMP is still into the chopping zone. All right, we had a high 770 in YM. So this is the first scale in. Okay. Shay, it's exactly how I mentioned it. This is the scale in YM. It's posted in the room, of, in this room, right way where you asked. Just take a look and read it. Well, now we're in because it just triggered the 70. Okay, so we scale in at 70, half a position, half, not the whole entire trade. So half of your risk. We're get we're in at 70. We have a stop into the 40 for the entire position. And when it gets to 791, we're going to add the rest. Okay. So why am it says here, why am scale in half at 770 it just triggered seconds ago. Okay. We have a nice confluence. See, it didn't really get into my preferred level. I would have liked it into the 725, to be honest, into that area. But it's holding above, which is which is okay. But the, the thing is that between the 70, that's why I initiated only half of the trade here, half of the risk, is because it's still into a turbulent zone all the way to 70. 77. So from 70 to 77, and it's into a chop zone. Okay, into a chop zone. NASDAQ trade still remains intact, 791 by 860. Still chopping around. Russell, a little bit more strength here. Don't forget, in six minutes, we have the oil inventory numbers. Okay, YM will have a hard stop at 7.40. Okay, YM will have a hard stop at 7.40 on the first half of the trade. We are just in with half of the position at 770. So if your risk per day is $1,000, you just got in with $500, okay? You position size for that.
Here it is again into the 70s. If you didn't get it, here's your second chance. Uh, NASDAQ is really acting up here. Home Depot new highs were just going parabolic. So the Dow is pretty much the place, you know, the, the index that we want to be in. Uh, divergency in that stack hitting right now. We had a second target in Home Depot at 265 and it just got hit right now. And we have a second target into 266, and then we have an extension all the way to 274, and that is for longer term. Okay, so NASDAQ right now, cancel NASDAQ. Okay, so see, if you decide to jump into a trade, if you decide to jump into a trade without having the trigger in, it's almost a guaranteed stop. I mentioned this a little while ago. Okay, take a look at NASDAQ right here. Right, it didn't respect our parameters. Remember, we wanted to buy it here into the 890s. See where my cursor is into the 890s. It didn't fulfill this spot and now it's dropping. Okay. So we have a low of 743 right now. Into uh, into YM. Let's see if we're gonna hold this spot or we have a hard stop on half of the position. Let me take it back to the five here. Here we go. We're consolidating pretty nicely here. So this, this is our stop here into the 740s. See, I hate pinching these, uh, these really tight stops here, but let's see if this is gonna work out. I don't want to give it more room than 40. See, it's that 15 minute that I showed you guys earlier that is uh, creating the issue. And by the way, the four hour structure is still intact. 700 is still a possible retest for a load into this trade. We'll see how it develops. Right now we need to get it over well, any tick right now, any tick over 63 may push it back to 67. And this is on the short, uh, on the very short term side. NASDAQ divergent. The Dow holding because the Dow stocks are incredibly strong right now, incredibly strong. And they're holding. We have a low of 43, 40 is still holding. We're not gonna give it more room. 
Remember, this is only half a size. Okay, and we're out. So Y am out on the first scale in. No damage. All right, we have to wait for everything to recalibrate. Remember, we're still looking for a long in the Dow. We're not giving up on the directional bias yet. Uh, look at Russell, by the way. Look at Russell here. Just mega strong, mega, mega strong. We may have to repeat that. That, that must have been a wash in, uh, in these stocks right here. Be ready to get back in. Seventy five in seventy five. Why am long at seventy five? Why am long again at seventy five? Still half the size. It triggered. The stop is going to have to be seven twenty. We're going to be looking for the same uh, same targets. Let's see if we get it. Was a washout of the stops. That's what I'm telling you guys with the tight stops. I want to make sure that I'm getting good size in it as well here. We have a 15 minute rotation as well. See what it did guys. Remember when I said that I wanted into the 30 to 25 zone. It made a low of 37. It washed everybody out, washed everybody out. No, Steve, it's not valid anymore. The 790, scratch the 790, scratch the 790. We don't have that parameter valid anymore. Thanks for the ask. It's not setting up yet. Okay, on this particular trade, the first target is going to be, it's actually 790. Okay, target 790. Eight hundred, eight twenty. No kidding, Greg, are you kidding me? Eight points slippage? Are you using think or swim? Okay, gotcha. Is rhythmic by gotcha by ninja. Okay, so we're going to look for targets, 7,9800, and I'm going to be trailing the whole entire position for this trade. Okay, the whole entire position for this trade. Okay, these are the targets are posted right now. Okay, it's 1035. Unbelievable. So I wanted to get a head start on the trade with that second half in uh, to get it ready for the trigger time. And they just decided to run some stops here. That's a really bad, that should not happen, Greg. I would talk to them, I would call them. This is not normal to have that kind of slippage. So Greg, call them. It, this is unacceptable, unacceptable. Uh, 
Okay, did you get back in, Greg? We need to see a point right now of, see what it says. Okay, we need to see a print of 90 right now in order for the price to start pushing higher. But I'm not gonna add at 90. Yeah, Brian, good question. Was that a market order or a limit order? Because sometimes market orders of uh, Oh, I've seen limit orders slip, Ralph. Yeah, by definition, but I've, I've seen slippage. It's not taking you out where it should. Okay, so now we need to see, let's focus on that 91 print. Let's focus on the 91 print again. We need to see 91. Okay, here it is, 95. We're not adding to this trade, by the way. We're not adding to this trade, by the way. All right, so we got our 90s. Oh, we're getting very close to 800. We were four points away from 800. We're not that far away. We just printed a high on this candle of 96. So that's four points away from 800. Uh, and then the next target is going to be 813. You can see it right there with the green uh, line. If you're considering SMP, and I know some of you may like the mini SMP, I'm going to give you some parameters. First of all, the stop is going to have to be uh, 55 for the stop, whatever you do. And then the entry price is going to have to be 58. Okay, 58. Okay, here we go, 98, we have two points into 800. Two points into 800. All right, three points into 800 right now. One point, we just ticked uh, up. One point from this candle high, it's still into that 800. Remember, there's resistance between 820 and 800. And definitely, if we explode over 820, we're heading higher. NASDAQ, very choppy. You know what, NASDAQ, I'm just gonna keep it here on the, um, maybe on the one hour structure, okay? Because definitely NASDAQ needs to trade over 900 in order to start pushing higher. It has a lot of resistance here. It has this pivot, um, it ha also has price action pivot, it has the 50 SMA, it has uh, prior price action resistance. So it has a lot of things that may go against it. All right, here we go, 800 target hit. 800 target hit. Now we're looking for 813, 820, and then we're going to follow along on our other plan. Beyond 820, we're going to look for 850, 860, and um, even higher. Let's see if we could get it higher, but we're going to be diligent. First of all, we need to see it. Um, we need to see it above 820. Yeah, over 820, uh, and that's gonna be the New York trading session high. And if we get over that, we're definitely gonna see it higher. So we need to see a print of 820. So 813 and 820 are gonna be the next areas.
Disney, nice inside day here, 3M as well. So the Dow stocks are definitely a much stronger um, element for us to ignore the Dow. Um, S&P is into a lot of chop. Uh, NASDAQ is having a heavy divergence to the downside. I'm thinking here that we should um, trail 75. I don't know, that's heavy divergence here. Look how hard it's coming in. Yeah, I, I, we don't have an ad spot anymore. The structure has changed. We don't have an ad spot anymore. Uh, right now, the ad, uh, ad spot would be over 820, but 820 being target here and also resistance, that is not gonna make it a good ad spot. I don't like the reaction in NASDAQ here. It's testing the lows, but yet, you know, it's testing the lows, but it's still strong. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's all over the place. It's very choppy, very volatile. It has, and like I said, it's still trading into this four hour structure. And that's why it's meandering like this because the stop is seven, uh, 770 uh, for NASDAQ. So that's why it's just behaving the way it is. But it does have some very strong elements, but it's not strong enough. See, NVIDIA pulling back. BABA is actually weak, uh, and it's pulling back. It's into the red today. Uh, it had a, a shallow gap down, and now pivoting lower, um, having that resistance, creating pressure for the sell side. Uh, and AMD, beautiful, <laughs> wow, AMD hitting the first um, extension zone. All right, so we had the oil numbers out at 10.30, and let's just take a look. Not a lot, not a lot of chop here, not a lot of chop. No, not bad. Let's take a look at the four hour again. Yeah, not bad. So the 50 trigger is still valid. 50 trigger is still valid. All right, we're on the go again uh, into the Dow. Very messy setups for day trading today, guys. Not, not the clearest, not the best, not the best. Not the best. Uh, it's not yet in Charles on Michael. We need to get it over at least over 15 to 20 in order to start trailing it. It's into resistance of um, just waiting to see how it handles this resistance. So into this high here, what, what we accomplished 
Uh, we almost got our money back from the first trade, right? So we're more or less into the break-even spot for the day. But we need to see a print right now of 815. We need to see that print of 815 and no trail spot yet. We, we're still trading into the original stop with the original stop. Come on Dow, get over 15. Let me give you the bigger picture. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for a continuation into these targets. While we're having heavy divergency in NASDAQ, so it's not easy, but we're having a lot of strength into Russell. So Russell is that 1500 spot. We need to see a print of 815. Come on, market, you could do it. Eight fifteen, eight twenty would put us in a comfort zone, and at eight twenty we would look to trail. Then we would have a twenty to eight fifty, nice little void. From 820 to 850. Um, I don't want to be really dinged out of the trade. I don't know if the market structure is going to change here, but. I don't know, just thinking out loud, uh, if you want, this this could be an option for you if you want to put the stop and break even, but you're just asking for that spike to the downside to take you out. But that's an option. If you guys want to put your stops at break even, that's fine. I, I'm still in the trend and I'm respecting the same stop. Okay, that's my stop, the 720. It should be below 700, in all honesty, but we'll see when it gets there and if it gets there and how it trades because we have to monitor price action reaction here. All right, so as you can see, NASDAQ is back to the 20 SMA. It should get some kind of reaction here. It has a confluence area into the 800. So we're going to have to see if it's going to pinch higher. The S&P got a reaction on the 15. It has a trifecta support there. And by the way, the hard stop, we have hard stop into 720 NYM as of right now. Greg, if this happens again with Ninja, maybe you may consider, you know, changing the broker. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You could switch to TradeStation or any any broker um, um, out there. TD Ameritrade. Michael, you don't have a good opinion about Ninja, right? OK. 
because you mentioned it earlier. Okay. We're back into support. This cluster support. Gotcha, Michael. Uh, we're back into support into the Dow on the five minute and into the 15 minute. The one hour tapped onto the 20 SMA. NASDAQ is coming in. And so is the SMP. See, this spot held really well for NASDAQ and it helped. And I don't really want to choke it that much. See, 15 minute rotation. Let's let's get it back into the 15 minute here. See, I'm really glad that we only took half the size in the first trade and half the size in the second trade. We didn't have an ad spot. Like I said, that 815, we needed to see a print of 815 in order to consider higher. That was not an ad spot. Uh, Aaron, um, SMP needs to hold 32.43. That's the support for today's training session. 43. 42 to 43. VIX daily rotation. Oops, I don't even have it on my. And we talked about it, Brad, on Monday, and I said, hey, we have it at the 200 SMA. Yikes, I didn't look at it. Daily rotation. How's the four hour? Uh oh, four hour, Brad. Four hour, much more interesting. $30, it's 25 cents for the trigger. Stop into $29. Nice runner up to $30 and 80 cents. I'm thinking. It's right into the 20 SMA. Wow. Nice catch Brad. See, I took it off, off my screen again. I had it on Monday and I replaced it with something else with B Y and D. Okay. So I do that all the time with the VIX. Interesting spot here for the VIX, I have to say. Maybe let's do this. $30.25. 15029. You had Ninja and you had limit stop in place and lost several points past my stop. Yep. Yep. I know it happens. It happens. Um, guys, everybody that is using Ninja, I would highly recommend you call them and you have this discussion with them. And if they're not giving you solutions for this, uh, I would definitely switch brokers. It's there. There are so many brokers out there with TradeStation, guys. You can open an account with $500 and trade micros. 
I'm just saying that the minimum requirement for trade station and they have very competitive um, uh, commissions. Aaron, you use Ninja and are you fine with it? Okay, guys, let's try to play with this YM a bit here. Okay. See, I'm losing interest in it, a five minute. We could have made it whole position here. We have a five minute rotation into the top of the hour. Yes, I know, Phyllis, that's the only reason why I'm not using a trade station. But here's the thing. I have uh, many traders here in the trading room that are using, so they have funded, you know, a very small amount with uh, Think or Swim. And they're, they're having their account with trade station and they're only using, uh, they're only using the, um, see, we're back again to break even here at 75 on this trade. Um, so what they do is they're using the charting from Thinkorswim, but they're trading off trade station only, uh, they're only using the, or to put in the orders. Exactly. Trade station is great for micro commissions. And if you guys want a special deal for trade station, you can head on to the website, uh, because they have contacted me. Uh, to so I listen I'm not getting any kind of affiliates or anything from them you know just a heads up so I don't benefit from referring you guys there uh, but what they do when it, what I did with them is I said yeah okay so I can add you as our partner uh, under one condition <laughs> okay you give my traders a better deal so if you head on to my website, tradeoutloud.com, and at the bottom of the page, you see a trade station tab, okay? Uh, if you're using that, you're going to have a $1,000 rebate in commissions. So you're only gonna start paying commissions after that $1,000, okay? So um, I'm passing all, all these benefits, okay, to you guys. So just a heads up, just head on there if you want it. Freedom, what if you're using TradeStation? Well, no, they're not gonna give you, yeah, no. You have to be a brand new user. You have to be a brand new user. So anyone in here that is trading on Ninja, remember you can fund, I don't know, 500 bucks or uh, something to, uh, if you wanna use the Think or Swim charting, use the think or swim charting and then open an account with trade station fund that account because you get you get all the benefits from uh from that i'm gonna tell you exactly what you're gonna be getting right now so we're still in the trade guys like i said that was the five minute rotation we were uh just looking at some other charts and there was not much price difference right because the uh, the trigger would have been into the 66 and it was just 10 10 cents the 10 uh takes away from uh, from our entry, so it was not a big deal. It was not a big reduction in price. Uh, totally not worth it. Okay, totally not worth it. Uh, but I'm telling you guys, I don't know. So Nasdaq is not, you know, cooperating uh, yet. Okay, we're back into the 800. Patience, patience, patience. Okay. All right, let's get back with the five minute here. Five minute rotation into these strong indices. Definitely the Dow the strongest. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you exactly what. Okay, they're gonna give you guys 20% commission rebates up to $1,000 of free software for non-professional data. And all you have to do is open an account with $500. That's the minimum requirement. Okay, here we go, guys. Yay. I'm not gonna add to the trade, just a heads up. Here we go, over 23, over 23, beautiful. Okay, over 23. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. So we hit our, uh, we hit some really nice targets there. 
Uh, we had a high of 832. Makes me so happy. Makes me super happy right now. We just uh, recovered from the loss that occurred um, to our first trade with half the size. Okay, so keep it small. We just, uh, it's the type of day where we're having divergency and it's choppy. Okay, let's see here. Come on. We need to get some more. Um, we need to see a push. We did have an algo push right at 11 o'clock about a minute ago that pushed the price higher. So we were trading into these um, first targets into the 90 again, 90. 790, 800, 813, 820. And from the first call, we did have all the targets established, 820. So we hit the 820 mark. We actually had a print of 833. Uh, we need to see it into the 850 and 860. That, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, let me go back to the VIX. Hmm. I mean, it, it does look very nice on the four hour. Um, and now we have a, a um, what time is it? 11 o'clock. We have two hours into this four hour close and the high is $30.09. So that would be $30.10. And the prior high is $30.23, which, which would make a trigger into $30.25. I, I'm seeing the indices recover here. Um, I'm not going to do the VIX, Brad. I'm not going to do the VIX. I'm just going to put an alert. And if we get there, I'm going to take a look. Ramesh, um, I do like the think or swim dome, but um, a very long time ago, I used infinity. Very long, long time ago, I used infinity. They're super, they're, and I have to agree, their dome is super fast and easy to use. I think I used it like in 2012 or something like that. So it was a very long time ago. There was something that I did, I, the charting sucked, uh, yeah, uh, on it. But if you're just trading futures, it's nice. Ranish, I agree. Okay, we're curling back on the one minute. Let's see, every single little tick is gonna count. Uh, first off, we need to see a print right now of 13, 813. Once we see the 813 print again, you can see that green, green dotted line, green line, not a dotted line. Here we go. We pinched above. See, these are algos, guys. There was an algo that pushed the price from 811 into this high of 817. It was a little algo punch right there. All right, now we need to see, see it's struggling right here. I'm gonna put it on the two minute so you guys can see the price action. Uh, the short squeeze, uh, A20, John, into NASDAQ. Okay, we're back over 17. And thanks for the share, Ranish. Totally forgot about them. Okay, now we need to see a print of 821. 821 is what we need to see. 821 is gonna push it back into 825 and 830. Just watch that print. Come on, market. 
We're 25 minutes away from the London session close. Okay, here it is. Let's see. Brand new one minute candle. We need to see the price. Here we go. Here we go. We got our 21, 22. Perfect. Now let's keep on going. Uh, we have a mini trail spot, if you will, but I don't want to mention it yet. <laughs> okay. And that is 800. Okay. So it's just, just a spot right here. 800. Oh, gosh. Trail 800 right now, 800. Trail 800. In fact, the trail is 795, but I, I don't want to hold it because uh, NASDAQ is really, really acting up here. So divergent. Guys, if you want to take out 814 right now, you're break even on the day. Okay, so we managed to get break even on the day. If we manage, so let's keep the 800. Okay, let's keep the 800 stop. Here's our stop, okay? And let's see if we can make this work. It's not an easy day, but hey, it's fun. It's fun. Ideally, if I get a print of 830, I'm gonna lock in um, 814, which would be break even on the day. That would be uh, the first trade that was completely recuperated, and then uh, we're gonna start to build up from there. No ads, no other um, engineering <laughs> into these trades so far. So we have the trail at 800. If it holds, it holds. If it doesn't, it hold. If it doesn't hold, that's fine. All right, we're out. We are out. Awesome, Michael. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, YM trailed out. Okay. So, we made 25 points on this trade. And we lost 30 on the first one. So we're down five points today. Not a big deal. Market is not cooperating. I'm telling you guys, the market is very tough today. We're still going to stick around here to see if we have some um, opportunities.
Wow, very choppy price action. I'm still watching price, guys. I'll answer questions in a few. We're in the chop zone right here. We're into the chop zone. Okay, we have about three minutes, less than three minutes uh, into 11.15. All right, so NASDAQ is coming in. Still holding, the Dow is still holding. Let's take a look in about two minutes here. Into the Dow. If Dow is still holding, we may see a reversal. Mark, awesome, great job. Listen, a green day, even if it's a break even, in my book, it's a winner. Any day where you do not lose money in the market, and when you, even when you're down in a trade, like we were down in YM, you always have to wait for the opportunity to get back in. Shay, 30 points. Awesome. Great job, everyone. Gonna take a look at the VIX again. Let, let's just put it here. So four hour structure in these. See, these are so strong. These are so strong right now. Obviously, NASDAQ is, NASDAQ has been messy for the last uh, two days, two trading days. Okay, guys, so here's the deal. I'm not gonna do anything with, um, with the VIX. And here's why. I'll just keep on going back and forth. Okay, so IBM reported earnings uh, yesterday. I'm, uh, uh, yeah, 
It reported earnings actually after the close yesterday. No, not yesterday, the day before. Monday, after the close. Gosh, okay, did I get it right? Reported earnings Monday after the close. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the stock just skyrocketed. It made a high of 135.23. And then yesterday it sold off. And today, overnight, four hour, let me just put it here. On some cloud based something that they have improved on and the stock higher. Okay, so this is yesterday. This is pre earnings runner up, 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 up. And then at the open, it sold off and then it got picked up back again. Okay, so tonight, after the close, we have Microsoft that is reporting earnings. Okay. And look at Microsoft four hour. This is a total buy over this spot right here of 212. Total buy. So I'm not going to go with the VIX because we still have, and I think it's going to be very tricky. Oh, Rakesh, you did that five minute rotation in YM. That's awesome. Great, 23 points, great job. I'm so happy for you guys, awesome. So I think it's too much of a wild card because we do have Tesla and Microsoft. We have CMG that is reporting earnings. Um, what else do we have? Oh, KMI is reporting today as well. We're gonna add that to the scan list for next week. So yeah, I, I'm not going to go Listen, if Microsoft is going to be, I don't know, Tesla, I have no idea. Tesla is the wild card, but these two stocks are, um, are NASDAQ components. So I'm not going to gamble on them. And that's why I'm not going to do, let's take a look at Tesla. See, Tesla's still holding. They're just pending earnings. Of, of, uh, they're waiting for earnings. Look. These indices that we have here, if you go back to what we said, circling back to this morning uh, pre-market prep, you could see that we're still trading into this very strong context. We still have support into the trigger point into the 700, okay? I, I mean, I should have, I should have taken this. You know, there's literally no excuse other than, you know, the huge stop but it had a beautiful trajectory into target. Um, the S&P four hour triggered, it has a lot of resistance into the 60 and that's where it stopped and it pulled back again, but we're trading, look at, look at where the price is, 32, uh, 32.49. And look at the number right here. It says moderately bullish above four hours. So this is it. Contingent on you having a stop, 20, uh, 30 to 27. And the target, the overall target in the S&P is not only into the 60s where it does have some divergency, but it's back into the 70s. So this is going to be the second target. They're still trading into this very strong context here. Very strong context. Um, NASDAQ is divergent, but it's into a plethora. So today it just triggered the buy zone, the first buy zone from this four hour rotation and it hit this medium pivot right into the 900. And then it started to fade out again. Uh, we do have targets for higher. These two targets, this is going to be, you can see the bullish above level. And let me just take it to a smaller time frame here so you can see the notations. This is the buy zone. This is the first buy zone. This is the direction confirmation zone. So it needs to trade over 920 in order to have that confirmation direction confirmation zone. And it's definitely going to be bullish above this 934 to 935. Okay. And I, I'm not going to do the VIX. I'm not going to do the VIX. First off, we have earnings from Tesla and Microsoft. Uh, second of all, we have extremely bullish structure in the Dow, the S&P and Russell. And NASDAQ obviously is taking a break and uh, from this expansion higher and hit the all time highs, now faded. Uh, and the, it gives a, a good amount of time for these other indices, the Dow, the S&P and Russell that have not made new highs this year, but to try to catch up into that void into the high because that is their expansion zone right now. 
So, um, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm looking. So I'm looking to see if there are any, if there's any other news or any other, you know, let's see here. Gotta get my glasses to take a look at these. Um, if we see some kind of inside information here. No, we don't, we don't. So indices are steering into, uh, into these zones right here. We have less than 10 minutes into the uh, close of the session it has been incredibly choppy. Remember, this is the type, look at this range right here, by the way. Still support into the 740, right? Still support into the 740 and is looking for a breakout into um, 715. I'm not sure if I want to take this again. The SMP is very sloppy. No trades in the SMP. NASDAQ is trying to bounce off support. See how NASDAQ is just punching through support and then it's going back up. The only nice structure we have in two indices here and these two indices are, let me check out the 15 minute here in Russell. See, um, the 10 MA is protecting the price right now from sliding. So 750, 740 to 750 is going to be the spot that the Dow needs to hold. I mean, the Dow directional bias is higher, no doubt, no doubt. Directional bias for Russell is higher. I would not short anything today. So today is not a short day. Okay. Uh, Dana? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did see that news. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, if you guys are wondering, you know, Dana was just um, letting me know about the uh, Florida positivity rate, which is totally screwed. <laughs> the COVID-19. Apparently, you know, there's this um, TV station that went in and uh, looked at the reports and found the 100% positivity reports. And that is with Orlando Health. And they admitted that their numbers were wrong. I mean, no kidding saying that 98% were positive. I mean, it's just ridiculous what is happening. Just ridiculous. Only one thing I have to stay is say, stay home and trade. The drama is gonna phase out. <laughs> All right, so guys, I, I don't know what to do with the Dow here. D the Dow is bullish, no doubt about it. Uh, anywhere in this spot is going to be an ad zone uh, or I mean, it, it, another scale in type of trade or I would just trade it again for the rest of the day with half the size. I wouldn't go all, uh, you know, totally in. Uh, we have four minutes into the London session close, and I'm not going to take any action within these four minutes. Just a heads up. 
but we can go ahead and discuss the directional bias and possible trades for the PM session in case you guys want to, uh, you know, want to take some trades into uh, into the afternoon trading sessions, perhaps after. Um, uh, the London session close. Aaron, you still have two contracts. Good for you. Good for you. Awesome. I love that style of like, you know, hanging on, doing the all or nothing. So Aaron, you should be looking for 850, a pop over, uh, a pop into 850 to 860. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to do that in the room because well, our primary goal here in the room is to get everybody into consistency, but definitely Aaron, you have the right, um, approach to it. It has not violated the stop, number one. It has achieved only partial targets, number two. Stay in. Have you scaled out into targets, like into that 813? See, you have the right approach. Gold is back into the 860. Gold might extend higher. I had targets into the 1850 and I was happy with the targets, just took it off. Okay, um, the S&P is getting close to a 15 minute rotation. I'm just giving you the heads up. I'm not going to take it, but um, the S&P could be a long 32.55 by 32 under 32.44, okay? Uh, so it's gonna be 55, it's gonna be 55 by 44, 55 by 44, 11 point stop. And you're gonna look for a target into 32.60 and 65. And ultimately you're gonna get it into the 70. This is a nice pressure point here, okay? Nice pressure point. So remember the entry is 55, not gonna do it. I'm really busy this afternoon and I do not have the time, you know, to trail this. But if you want to take a trade and trail it on your own, 3255 by 3244 and look for a first target into 60 and look for a continuation into the 70. And uh, pretty much same setup with Russell, same structure. The entry would be 1491 and the stop needs to be 1483. And you're gonna look, uh, obviously you need to get it over this 90 again because it's resistance. And you can see that it has done the same shop fest top here that uh, the Dow did. So you're gonna be looking for targets. Obviously, uh, once it trades over this high into the 90s, uh, you're gonna look for 1500. So it has a nice tradable void to 1500. Let's take the VIX off the table here. And uh, oil still training into that four hour structure, which is good. Okay, it's 1130 brand new candles, which, mean that, which means that uh, the parameters are still intact. So this is what we wanna see. So once again, we wanna see Yeah, well, well you, you, uh, Dan, the thing is that Russell really needs to break above 1490 in order to start accelerating. You know, as long as it's meandering between this purple line and here it says stay long, it's target. And this is targeted from the bullish above zone that happened in boom, nanoseconds, right off the open. Okay, 15 minute in the Dow as well. Uh, so the Dow stop is still under 45, actually 35, if you want to keep it for 860. If you want to keep it for 860, that would be it. All right, so these would be the trade ideas for the afternoon. So this is what I would look for, okay? This is what I would look for.
So definitely the directional bias is higher for the Dow, the S&P and for Russell. And it looks good for higher. But again, it's going to be very choppy. And remember that you are getting into uh, you're, you're in getting into doldrums. Um, all right, so um, if any of you guys would like to um, review some other charts or some trading ideas or that you would like to share with the room, just let me know. All right, this is a wrap, guys, for the day. I mean, it's, it's continuing to be a very choppy day. If you intend on trading NASDAQ, sometimes I like a challenge, okay? Sometimes I like a challenge. So bottom line, bottom line is that NASDAQ is still along. It's just very hard to pin it, very hard to pin it with a tight stop. And this is a trade that you work out. Okay, you scale in, you scale out, you add back in, you get better average. And we're gonna do one of those exercises very soon. We're gonna do, we haven't done it in a while. Then friends, it's your stop because you're trading a, a breakout here. Your stop needs to be uh, seven, well, I would put 7.35 or 7.34 and then look for a target into 850 and 860. At 850, you're gonna be looking to take some, uh, take some out, take some profit out. And if you still wanna keep it, you have another target in 900 and another one in 926. Yeah, the, the five minute has the better technical image here because you can see the chop. So don't try to choke it up. And the same goes with uh, the m and SMP. The m and SMP is a little bit descendant and that's why this is gonna uh, start working on uh, getting back into the pattern because we had pinch lower, pinch lower right here. So they fell a little bit off the wagon, but now they're really trying to get back into the pattern and that uh, get back into the pattern area is going to be that 55. And as far as NASDAQ is concerned, it's still a huge support level right here. Huge support level. You, you can pin it with, a, it, it's just like gold and it's just like oil right now, NASDAQ. It's volatile and it's not responding to exact day trading uh, stocks. You know, those are really tight stocks. It's not going to work that way. So you have to have the capital to work the trade out. So if you do know how to do that, uh, you could go ahead and trade it. Uh, I still see a very robust, nice structure into it. And uh, you can see the pin down right here, that bottoming tail, beautiful reaction off of the support zone one. And you can see that this is the only index where we have support zone one and support zone two. And that is because this whole entire thing is going to react uh, as a cushion. Right, so the price is going to get once the price is going to get into this spot, this becomes a bouncy spot. So it's going to go in and out, in and out, in and out within this space. All right, five minute doji right here. This is going to have a tell within the next four minutes. And if we have a print of 55, definitely the price is going to start moving higher. However, if it's going to have a print 
uh, 52, the price is going to start coming in into the m and &E SMP as part of the doldrums. So not a lot of selling, as you guys can see here, into um, the indices, uh, into the London session close. I think it's just going to be uh, the possibility of accumulation and possibly a run up higher into the PM session because they're still coiling at the highs. They're still holding on very strong. So this is nothing. So directional bias for this afternoon is higher at this time of 11.37 a.m. And uh, if it's going to start punching through, if NASDAQ is going to start punching uh, that 8.15 to 8.20, it's off to the races. Uh, 850 to 860 next targets. S&P is a little bit more difficult at this point because like I said, it's trying to get back into the pattern and that getting back into the pattern is contingent on printing the 3255. So it has not done that, not, has not done that yet. Uh, we had a little peekable high here into 5475, but we didn't have the print of 55. So it really needs that 55 print. Russell as well, very strong. New York trading session low, higher, uh, higher low, higher low right here as well. We do have the uh, first higher low at 10 o'clock, second higher low at 11.15, textbook for a continuation higher. We have higher highs as well. We have the nice market tempo here. We have the location with the bullish above here. You have the confirmation to stay bullish. Here you have resistance and some divergency that can occur uh, from yesterday's trading session as well into the 14.90. Uh, obviously, you need to trade right now in the PM session over these highs, over the 93s, and if we get it over the 93, then we could see it back into the 1500. Um, and we reviewed NASDAQ. Like I said, NASDAQ is going to be that work, work in progress. You know, it's the work in progress. And um, see, this is a nice 15-minute rotation here with the targeted one into the 800, and then it had another spot into the 810 to 815. The other one was 820, and it came right into the eight. Well, I would say 820 was the biggest target, and then it had another target. I mean, you can play with short squeezes. It's it's a beautiful trade if you um, you know, if you're respecting the pattern. This is not something that I could do here in the trading room because it requires 100% focus. I cannot take questions. I have to trade on my own you know, shut up and trade uh, type of scenario. So this, you know, you have to trade it on your own. You can't just, you know, uh, start explaining every step of the way where you need to put the trail, where you need to do this and how to anticipate it. This is like, see it and trade it. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. This is a wrap for today. Let me know if you guys uh, need any help or assistance with any trades that you may, you may be in. Hmm. Yeah, shape, that's true. There you have the 55. Remember, if you're taking this pattern, the 3255, the stop obviously needs to be below these lows right here. So your stop is 44. Like I said, it's going to have an 11 point stop. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm going to repeat uh, repeat the targets here. So the first target is going to be into um, into the 58 to 60, and then it has a pretty nice clear void um, from, from 60. So once it breaks over the 60, that's the first target, then it's gonna start continuing to the 70s. It, it's a bit more problematic. So the S&P is not as, uh, not as easy as um, a, a follow through into the mini Dow it's going to have. And definitely here you have a nice 15 minute rotation at Russell. Like I said, the trigger is going to have to be over 89 or 90. 90 would be preferable. Uh, for the uh, for the higher uh, for the higher target, and you could use uh, two stops. You could use uh, either uh, 1484, which would be a very tight stop because it's regaining the 10 EMA. So you would be actually trailing it off the uh, off the 10 EMA up, down, up, down. And if it gets really extended, then you could zoom in to a smaller time frame to to trail it. Definitely zoom into a smaller time frame to trail it. Okay. Um, Okay, so T2, did that answer your question uh, with SMP? So you're going to look for 60 and then a continuation into the void, but you need to see it really consolidate and coil over that 60 or punch 60, 60 to 62 in order to transition back into the 3270. Uh, I see some really nice improvements. So NASDAQ is back into the pattern. Okay, so this is nice, uh, nice confirmation uh, in NASDAQ. 
Uh, and like I said, you know, NASDAQ is trading off a much higher structure. This is the structure right here. So it's coming back into support, bouncing, back into support, bouncing. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. This is it for today. Let me know if you guys have any other questions right now. Anything about any kind of trade, whether it's a stock or index or force or whatever it is. Okay. All right, guys, this is a wrap. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Today we had uh, today we had two trades, one trade with half the size. Again, we've noticed the divergency that is uh, into the market and we didn't want to risk the full size, uh, full size risk for the trade. Uh, we took the first trade in the Dow. We had a 30 point risk and this trade stopped. We took a second trade on the reshuffle back into a trigger time and uh, the trade worked out for us. It actually achieved the target beyond the break even for the day. Uh, I know that you, uh, many of you have texted uh, into the trading room and have said that, hey, you took profit back there. A lot of you guys made money on that and continue to stay in. Congrats for that. I, however, uh, trailed it and uh, have made 25 points. So I'm still five points down, which is not a big deal, but it's definitely the first day this month where I'm having five points down, which is not bad. But <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow into the trading room at 9 a.m. Eastern. Until then, stay safe, risk wisely, and uh, have a great rest of the day trading or just take the day off. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.